Hello and good evening to you all. My name is Shashank Shekhar Singh and you are watching D Daily News Simplified. An answer to what, why and how of newspaper analysis from the perspective of UPSC examination. So here we have taken up important news and articles from three important newspaper that is The Hindu, Indian Express and Business Line. Dated 27th March, New Delhi edition. So on this side of the screen, the topic for mains discussion are listed. First is the employment landscape of India because of the recent report by ILO, that is International Labour Organization. Second is the news article which was based on black carbon and issues related to it. Third is the climate action bill in light of the proposed COP which is going to happen in Baku, Azerbaijan. Here the prelims topic first is based on International Seabed Authority that is ISA. Second is based on Atal Pension Yojana. Third is Krishi Integrated Command and Control Center. Fourth is based on textile sector. Fifth is traditional New Year festivals in India. And sixth is based on CPCB. So, before moving any further, here is a request that if you like our initiative, please like our video and share and subscribe to the channel. So, let us begin our discussion of today's session. And the first news that we are going to take up today from the mains perspective featured on page number one of the Hindu newspaper. As we discussed the uh, in previous slide that topic is related to employment scenario because of uh, ILO report and according to this report on many fronts things have improved like labor force participation, unemployment and all. But overall employment scenario is still grim. Why we will uh, see in the discussion that why is it so and what are the issues. But before moving to that let us quickly understand who brought this report and uh, what is the most important finding of this report which is concerning for everyone including the chief economic advisor. So this report has been brought by the published by ILO that is International Labour Organization along with the Human Institute of Human Development. IHD. So ILO along with ISD has brought this report and uh, Mr. V. Anant Nageswaran who is Chief Economic Advisor released this. And the most peculiar finding of this report is that out of the share of unemployed, unemployed uh, youth, 65% or you can say roughly 66% belong to those who have secondary or higher level of education. So, on the contrary to the notion that uh, with the le level of educational attainment, the employability or the prospect is uh, going to be better, it is not uh, so. 65% of unemployed youth, both men and women combined together, have either secondary level or higher or uh, higher than secondary level of education. What is more surprising that this is a jump of almost uh, it. This number is uh, almost double to what it was back in the year two thousand. It was around thirty five percent. So it is almost double. Sixty six percent is almost double. In the year 2000, 35% were uh, having the higher educational attainment, but now 65%. So, problem is related to educated youth, mainly in urban area. And citing this, the chief economic advisor has uh, said that government, government cannot be solution to every economic and social problem prevailing in India. He said that corporates and industries should come forward to create more job for youth. 
बिकॉज डिस्पाइट हैविंग सेवरल इनिशिएटिव सेवरल इंटरवेंशन दिस नंबर दीज नंबर आर नॉट वेरी इनकरेजिंग विल कवर मोस्ट ऑफ द फाइंडिंग ऑफ दिस रिपोर्ट इन लेटर पार्ट ऑफ डिस्कशन बट वाई वी हैव टेकन अ बिकॉज ऑफ जी एस पेपर थ्री सिलेबस इफ यू कैन सी एम्प्लॉयमेंट हैज बिन मैंशन इफ यू विल रेफर टू मेन्स क्वेश्चन uh employment is a repetitive theme in upsc mains examination as you can see in 2019 they have asked a question based on employment in india again in 2016 they correlated globalization with employment and informalization how how it is detrimental to the development of the country so these are the question that they have asked based on employment further if you will look at the prelims point of view uh, from the prelims point of view also they have asked question based on employment and its status as you can see in 2020 they have asked a question where statements were given uh, related to the facts of employment status in india fine so here in this discussion what we are going to cover we will quickly look into the problem of unemployment in india why it is a persistent problem and while going through those those challenges we will simultaneously look into what this report has highlighted that how these problems are real how these problems are uh, kind of creating the problems or the the concern for the entire economy so let us begin our discussion after uh, having seen the problems which uh, which are contributor to the persistence of un unemployment finding of this report we will look into the ways suggested by this particular report and uh, name of this report is india india em employment report 2024 india employment report 2024 so what they have suggested what are their suggestions and then we will move on to our next discussion so let us begin our discussion with discussing what causes the persistence of unemployment in india so first point is shifting away from agriculture now most of the labor force most of the labor force this is uh, this was the notion and uh, pay focus here that here a very interesting finding has come with this report most of the labor has shifted towards non farm non farm jobs okay or tries to shift but what we have learned till date that economy has failed to create the equal number of in both terms of quality as well as quantity the level of non farm jo jobs that should have been created is not there so those who are moving remain unemployed underemployed or you may say they return back and then they uh, accentuate the traditional problem of uh, disguised unemployment so this is the notion that non farm jobs are not there so uh, the shift from agriculture is kind of the mismatch more labor force is there but jobs are not there but this particular report find this understanding as a paradox because this report says that employment rate the employment growth rate in non farm sector is way higher than what was expected even higher than in agriculture sector so this report says though uh, we uh, we had a notion that non farm jobs are not there but growth is there in non farm non farm sector only so they find this a paradox okay but they also uh, consider this as a factor that yes growth is there good growth is there higher growth is there but still the number of jobs in non farm sector is still low fine the second challenge lies in the tradi traditional factors 
what are those traditional factor one we uh, one we discussed that disguised unemployment in agriculture sector another is traditionally the characteristic of indian economy is that we have not invested much on labor intensive intensive sectors like leather okay uh, manufacturing so these traditional factors are still reality for indian economy and this is why we have failed to create more jobs and this is where as you can recall the chief economic advisor has said that government cannot be solution for everything he has advised uh, the industries to come out of that mindset that only profit making should be the aim the industry should come out to create more jobs for youth fine third reason is the informalization and contractualization why this report says that this is still a prevalent phenomena 90% are employed in informal sector and many of the youth if you can recall the youngsters who have attained better level of education because of this informalization and contractualization are preferring to stay away from the job okay this is the first thing second thing is that this informalization is hampering the social security network again here we would i would like you to focus on this point that is quality of job all this informalization and contractualization lack of social security impacts the quality of job more than 66% who are unemployed are not are not taking up employment just because of the poor quality of job they are waiting for a better opportunity so this is another finding of this report okay so kind of uh, these two points are cause effect relationship have, share cause effect relationship the next concern that this reports also highlight and we must understand that why unemployment is there is social norms which keeps various vulnerable section like women schedule caste schedule tribes they it keeps the vulnerable section away from the job or uh, even if they will give a job it would be again the quality would not be there and this report also highlights that still the gender gap is there and the most badly affected section is schedule caste and schedule tribe who are impacted in terms of both quality of job not being offered good quality job second quantity itself is compromised they don't have much options to explore now again the fifth reason is lack of skills and education now you know that uh, there is a gap between what uh, the market demands the skill set that market demands and what the skill set that we have a uh, latest report says that roughly 13% of youth has got some kind of training skill training out of which only 2 to 3% have formal level of training rest are informal so this lack of skill and education creates a, a gap between demand and supply and this report highlights a very interesting data i would like to quote here that this is reality because according to this report 60% of those who want employment cannot copy paste text 75% are unable to send an email with an attachment and almost 90% are unable to put a mathematical formula in an excel sheet so this is the gap because we uh, we are already in the era of digital digitalization and we are looking at ai and higher level of application and see the trend people are not able to send an email with attachment they are unable to copy paste a text 
they are unable to put mathematical formula in an excel sheet so the reason again this report verifies that this is the reason why there are there is unemployment quality aspect we saw another important point that we can note here is traditionally in india public sector has been a, a provider of employment in the country but now uh, without because they are they have turned into loss making assets for government so government is a uh, kind of shrinking this public sector and the result uh, is that <clears throat> job uh, availability of job both in terms of quality and quantity is hampered so it is an add on which is adding the uh, adding to the misery of the unemployment so these were the findings and reasons together in pdf you can have the findings of the report and reasons separately so you can make out uh, your notes fine so what this report has suggested because this according to this report there are various initiative that this uh, the governments have taken like atmanirbhar bharat rozgar yojana pradhan mantri rozgar protsahan yojana manrega din dayal upadhyay gramin kaushal yojana again focusing on still skill development and pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana but uh, this report suggests few thing let us quickly cover them first it says that economic policies are required to boost productive non farm farm employment as you can recall i told you that they are saying it, there is a growth but still we need to do more especially in manufacturing sector okay it says give intensive uh, primacy to labor intensive manufacturing employment okay next it says that msmes should be provided support and this time support should be specialized like it should include digitalization and artificial intelligence along with a cluster based approach to manufacturing further it says on the quality aspect that investing in a regulating sector that are likely to be an important source of employment for young people such as care sector and digital economy further it says that with higher rate of urbanization and migration expected in india an inclusive urban policy is required inclusive inclusive means to address the need of migrants women and impoverished young people and lastly and most importantly it says that a larger and more targeted role for state governments and a stronger partnership with private sector and other stakeholder is also needed along with greater contribution by the private and non state sectors so that is all from this news article let us start the discussion of the ne next news article which featured on page number 8 of the hindu newspaper and uh, this article talks about why there is a need to curb black carbon emissions and uh, this news article focuses more upon the analysis of pm ujwala yojana uh, which had this component in it to mitigate the indoor air pollution so before that uh, we must understand what is black carbon now black carbon commonly we know it as uh, call it as soot and it is component of uh, fine particulate air pollution uh, pollutant that is pm 2.5 and mainly it occurs due to in incomplete combustion of fuel fossil fuel like woods and uh, fossil fuels and woods so incomplete combustion creates uh, there um, is reason for their genesis and they are component of uh, fine particulate matter pm 2.5 so why we have taken up because of the syllabus itself gs paper 3 the environmental pollution if you can see mains question in 2017 they have asked the climate change is a global problem and you will understand that how black carbon is a major contributor to it how india will be affected by climate change and all those parts and 
In prelims also, they have asked question based on various pollutants. Like in 2019, they have asked a question based on. Uh, <clears throat> they have given. They had given four option and asked you which of the above are released into the atmosphere due to the burning of crop biomass residue. So let us begin our discussion by understanding what is black carbon. So as I told you that. Uh, it commonly we call it soot uh, part of uh, pm 2.5 component of pm 2.5 and uh, genesis is incomplete combustion of biomass and fossil fuels okay and considered as dangerous pollutant now how it is different from co2 because co2 carbon monoxide and uh, volatile organic compounds also come out due to this um, incomplete combustion now <clears throat> co2 has a longer period in uh, um, you can say the lifetime in atmosphere is longer it has a shorter lifetime but it is a very potent you may say component or ele uh, or element of pollution which can make uh, major changes in the chemistry or you may say the geography of the uh, uh, environment surrounding you okay basically it acts as a pollutant so if i i have to talk about the sources they are uh, mainly resident <coughs> like biofuel cooking and heating coal cooking and heating on road diesel engines industrial coal and brickens and agricultural fields the open burning in agricultural field now uh, entire world is facing problem of this black carbon but there is a fine difference between different parts of the world while the con uh, countries in asia and africa the main source is re uh, resident biofuel and fossil fuel burning because there they uh, they lack the clean energy sources mainly in asia and africa so major constituent is the burning of fossil fuel and uh, biomass in cooking process at home while in developed country the major source is diesel which is being used in vehicles okay so because they have access to clean fuel now how it is dangerous understand it under three points basically now soot covers the surface it absorbs heat okay so what it does when it starts absorbing heat it is reducing the albedo albedo is what reflective capacity of any surface so when it covers a surface it reduces the albedo now when it reduces the albedo it is going to absorb more heat okay now if the layer is at the level where uh, cloud formation is started now if layer is there now heat is being absorbed it will warm up and cloud will evaporate definitely it is going to change the rain pattern because it will disturb the cloud formation on the contrary if it is on the upper side here you can see now again a layer is there reflective reflection is low now it is absorbing light so again raising the temperature but dim light is coming to earth so it can create cooling effect also sometimes most of the time it creates a heating effect for clouds due to absorption of more heat uh, more sunlight but sometime when it creates a barrier for uh, light to get through it it kind of creates a cooling effect because of dim sunlight will come now the second when it will affect the mountains the snow cladded mountain now snow has a white surface definitely the albedo is high but when covered with soot the albedo will go down now it will start absorbing more heat now this more heat the accumulated more heat will result in the melting of glaci uh, glaciers now the third the humans now as i told you 
it is component of pm 2.5 finer material it can easily go to human body especially lungs and through lungs toxic material or toxic pollutants can enter into blood streams also now it can give rise to various serious health issues like heart attack asthma bronchitis etc it can also cause premature death basically in children and indoor pollution is also one of the major reason of premature uh, death of children and women because they are cooking there they are at the forefront of facing this pollution so this was all about the black carbon now uh, coming back to the article did pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana helped question uh, which this article asked so this article uh, quickly uh, go, takes you through the aim that to provide free liquefied petroleum gas that is lpg to households below the poverty line now one was the lowering the dependence on the fossil fuel but the major component was reducing the indoor air pollution thus reducing black carbon emissions as it offers a cleaner alternative to traditional fuel consumption because biomass wood all are uh, all were being used in household rural household especially so it was a, a step to change that to provide them clean energy clean fuel but what studies have found that 25% of beneficiary availed either zero lpg refill or only one lpg refill that means these 25% are still relying entirely on traditional biomass for cooking second they found that average beneficiary is using 3.5 to 4 lpg cylinder while non beneficiary or the regular users are using 6 to 7 regular cylinders so almost gap is double that those who are not beneficiary of it are using around 7 and they are using around 3.5 so basically again half of the energy needs is still being met by traditional fuels which have a high black carbon emissions and that is where this article talks that there is need to curb black carbon emissions because if uh, if you talk about the challenges or the most vulnerable section regarding the indoor air pollution those are women and children and as we have seen that how it is capable of creating the pneumonia and uh, cardio respiratory cardio respiratory complications in adults and pneumonia in children how dangerous it is for women and children so you can use these data to enrich your answer and uh, the concept regarding black carbon is important from prelims point of view so that's all for this article let's take up the last mains article of today's discussion uh, which is based on the climate action bill or to be precise uh, the new term uh, which is being used as new collective quantitative goal on finance so what is it uh this is a, uh, this is just a term which is being used uh, that what should be to assess the amount the what should be the amount that would be helpful to mitigate the impact of uh, climate change or uh, you can see here 
the new amount that must be mobilized by developed countries every year from 2025 onwards to finance climate action in developing countries. So, this is a collective term. Okay. Now, this news article is about the background that how climate financing has been a contentious issue, how whatever has been pledged uh, was never delivered, how we lagged and uh, since uh, the COP29 is going to occur in Baku, Azerbaijan in November this year, so author put forth his idea that what should be, what are the challenges in climate financing what are the concerns related to climate financing and what are the expectation of the developing countries in upcoming COP that is conference of parties and why we have taken for the obvious reason the conservation and environment issues as mentioned in GS paper 3. So let us begin our discussion and as I told you that author delves into the background and you might know that in 2009, a target of $100 billion was set. And why it was set? That developed countries would provide this much amount, $100 billion every year to developing countries to adapt, mitigate or to address the issue of climate change. Now, this was never achieved. Okay, till date. So, in Sharm el Sheikh, again, a declaration to set up a loss and damage fund was made. Now, what was it? In crude terms, understand that adaptation is your preparation to deal with any eventuality. Now, this fund was first time focusing on that compensation should be paid to those who have faced the uh, who have faced the consequences of climate change and this was particularly for the least developed countries and uh, you can say the vulnerable countries who are at the forefront of facing the challenges related to climate change so this fund was set up now in dubai conference in 2023 the global stock take happened. What was it? It was simply to understand how world it was a method to assess that how world has progressed towards achieving the target set in Paris Agreement. And in this, when this stock take happened, the first time world explicitly acknowledged that we need a transition away from fossil fuel. Okay, so this was explicit and they promised to triple global renewable energy capacity by 2030. Now this is all about the talk related to global financing or uh, you may say the climate financing. But issue is different. Issue is that you have set a target of 100 billion dollar which you have failed to provide. You have your reasons and uh, your condition, terms and condition. Anyways, adding all the methods, all the uh, you may say uh, assistance, you can see in 2021 we barely achieved 90 billion dollar and we added almost every, everything. If you can see in this picture that multilateral, uh, public, bilateral, export credit, mobilized private fund, total fund, whatever it was. So, 100 billion dollars specifically for this thing was a, is a distant dream because co collectively everything becomes 89 billion dollars only. Okay. So, author says that 100 billion dollars is not sufficient and he backed, uh, backed this idea by substantiating various with various studies that first thing he says that
developing countries would require a total of about 6 trillion annually between uh, between 2021 and 2030 just to implement their climate action plan whatever their intended plan are they need 6 trillion dollar annually and we have not met 100 billion dollar secondly sharmal sheikh a global transition to low carbon economy would likely here again experts and this declaration itself recognize that we need 4 to 6 trillion every year until 2050. Further, International Renewable Energy Agency that is IRENA that tripling the renewable energy target as agreed uh, by 2030 from 2025 to 30 it will require 30 trillion dollars again 6 trillion every year india submitted that only to um, achieve all those whatever the intended plans are it needs 1 trillion dollar unfcc says that whatever they have is half of what they require to keep these things running so author says when you are unable to deliver 100 billion need has uh, risen or uh, this the demand is going beyond trillions so how would you manage so according to author if this 100 billion was provided in time it could have brought positive results though it is insufficient but even if this amount would have been provided it would have been better further he says that so in baku what develop what developing countries would be expecting first is an inclusive and transparent mechanism to measure and monitor the amount that is going to be designated because this 100 billion dollar amount was decided without any cons consultation so what developing countries are going to expect from baku that there should be an inclusive and transparent method to first measure that what amount is required and then monitor that how it is being delivered second thing that develop developing countries could can expect or what they want is the distribution how this money would be distributed among different heads because most of the funding that is being provided under climate financing are skewed towards the mitigation efforts while developing countries want funds in adaptation and other heads they want to prepare themselves for eventuality they are asking for a capability approach but funds are given for the mitigation approach fine so these two are the as per the author should be aim of developing countries as a block in the Baku conference so as to reach out to a uh, universally accepted amount and formula so that's all for the mains perspective let us uh, begin our discussion for the prelim section and the first news article that we are going to take up for prelim section is uh, featured on page number one of the Hindu newspaper and is based on the International Seabed Authority. Now India has applied to International Seabed Authority to, uh, for exploration in two extensive areas, one of which is very rich in uh, cobalt. 
two extensive areas in Indian Ocean region. Now, why we are applying to ISA, that is International Seabed Authority? Because these areas are beyond our territorial or uh, beyond our territorial water. Okay, so anything which is beyond the territorial jurisdiction of a country uh, goes to the international seabed authority now they are the deciding authority whether you can take up exploration there or not so india has applied for uh, exploration in two zones in indian ocean region so upsc has been asking question based on unclos that is united nations convention on law of seas as you can see in 2021 itself it has asked and uh, international seabed authority that is isba is uh, one of the autonomous agency under the UNCLOSO only. So, we have taken up a question based on International Seabed Authority and uh, we have given three statements and you have to identify the incorrect ones. Now, first statement says that uh, ISBA organize and control all mineral related activities in the international seabed area also known as the area so this is correct as uh, you can see it is an autonomous organization created established in 1982 uh, under the unclos now it is the organization through which state parties to unclos organize control all mineral resources related activities in the area what is the area the part which is under isa jurisdiction that is seabed ocean floor and subsoil beyond the limits of national jurisdiction and this is a big area around 50 percent of world total uh, area of world's ocean is under the isba monitoring or regulation which we call the area so, first statement is correct. Now, it says all state parties to uh, unclose are ipso facto. That means, with just because being a party to unclose, they become member of ISBA. This statement is correct because all parties who are member to unclose are member to the ISBA, including India. India is also a member. So, it is open to country an international organization like European Union. Everyone who is party to UNCLOS is by virtue of that position becomes member of ISBA. Now, third statement says at present India has most number of licenses along with China as granted by ISBA. Now, this statement is incorrect because India at present has two license for exploration and it has applied for another two. If ISBA accept these two, India will have four licenses which will be equivalent to Russia but would be one less than China who has five licenses as of now. So, this statement is incorrect and that makes our statement A that only one as a correct answer okay now the inspiration for the second question is based on this news article which featured in business line page number three now opposition party and ruling party are uh, accusing each other for uh, uh, for the facts related to atal pension yojana scheme and uh, opposition leader mr jairam ramesh has accused government that this Atal Pension Yojana is a poorly designed scheme. First acquisition. Uh, to his substantiation, he says that uh, around 83% uh, of beneficiary of this scheme belong to the lowest slab. Lowest slab means slab of 1000 pension further he says around 
33% have opted out of this scheme because uh, their consent was not taken. Okay. Fourth allegation is because uh, why 83% uh, belong to lowest slab and why 33% have gone out because this scheme provides low return. This, these are the accusation to which uh, the finance minister uh, Nirmala Sitaraman has replied that these facts and figures that uh, the opposition has provided are false and she has given uh, her own facts and figure and she says that this figure itself that 33% have dropped out is uh, merely around 1.5% and not 33% and says that most of them who belong to the lowest strata because of this, this scheme intended to serve them. So there is no problem. And you will see that uh, how much the pension would be there would is dependent on how much contribution you are making. So she said that it is it was the intention. So any social sector scheme social related to social security is important from your uh, UPSC examination perspective. As you can see here in 2017, they have asked a question based on nation, national pension uh, system NPS. So, we have taken up a question based on Atal Pension Yojana and uh, here are some details. So, first thing it says that it is an old age protection and social security scheme under the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Now, this statement is partially correct because Ministry is Ministry of Finance, not Labor and Employment. The aim is correctly mentioned. Second statement says any Indian citizen in the age group of 18 to 40 can join through their bank accounts. Now this statement is correct as you can see age group is mentioned 18 to 40 and any Indian citizen can join through their saving bank accounts or post office saving bank accounts. So this statement is correct. Now, third statement says, as per the scheme, a fixed amount of contribution has to be made by the beneficiary. Now, this is incorrect because here the flexibility has been provided and amount of contribution ranges from rupees 42 to rupees 1454 per month, depending upon entry age, the age in which you are entering the scheme or uh, joining the scheme and the minimum pension that you opt for. So, as you had to find the correct statement, answer is A, that is only one, the second statement. Fine. Now, Ministry of Agriculture and for farmer welfare has come up with a new dashboard that is integrated command and control center that is ICCC to use the digital technology to give farmers information services and facilities. Just as the news headline suggests, a customized solution. Any initiative, new initiative or development related to agricultural field is important from the perspective of UPSC examination. As you can see here, they have asked a question based, of, based on neem coated urea. So, in 2016, so we have taken up a question based on the Krishi Integrated Command and Control Center. Now, first statement says it has been launched by Ministry of Electronics. This is wrong because this has been launched by Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. It says that it will showcase only topographical data such as soil quality but not meteorological data. Now, I would like to tell you that this statement is incorrect because uh, it is an umbrella scheme that will show a range of data to the farmers 
like it is going to use the artificial intelligence remote sensing and gis system which will collect data related to temperature rainfall wind speed crop yield etc so it will cover the meteorological data also Further, it says that it allows the farmer beneficiaries to interact through this center. Yes, correct. It enables farmer beneficiaries to interact directly with the officials or the minister through video conferencing facilities at the center and help desk facility. So, only one statement is correct. Your answer would be A, that is only one. Now, the next question is inspired from this news article which featured on page number 7 of the business line. Now, Maharashtra is a significant force in propelling the country's textile industry because we set a ta target of achieving a target of $100 billion of exports in textile sector by 2030. And Maharashtra has been the flag bearer in achieving this. Uh, you can understand this with the fact that it contributes around 10.4% of total production in textile sector. Now, you know that uh, textile sector in general, uh, the, there are three locational factors. First is availability of raw material. You can relate it with the Maharashtra itself, that cotton producing state in uh, central India and Maharashtra itself, the black cotton belt. Second, and you can uh, also see Calcutta nearing the jute producing areas. Second thing which is important is uh, cheap labor. Again, plenty of it in Maharashtra as well as Bengal or nowadays Tamil Nadu also. The third thing is availability of market so all these things are there in Maharashtra and uh, this article talks about how various uh, uh, schemes of central government and state government also are being utilized uh, and due to that the Maharashtra is leading this sector and uh, we have taken up a question based on one important scheme uh, because UPSC has been asking question based on schemes as uh, it has asked in 2017 about recognition of prior learning scheme. So, we have taken a practice question on the Samarth scheme. Now, all the schemes that has been mentioned in this article are listed here and your PDF also. Let us quickly cover the Samarth scheme. It is to incentivize and sum, supplement the efforts of the industry in creating jobs in the organized textile and related sectors, covering the entire value chain of textile, excluding spinning and weaving. This is an important point. It ex excludes spinning and weaving. It is a demand-driven and placement-oriented umbrella skilling program. A uh, special provision for upskilling or reskilling programs have been operationalized to improve the productivity of existing worker in apparel and garmenting segment. And here, if you will see which of the following best describes the Samarth, you will find that option D is correct because this is umbrella uh, placement oriented skilling program for textile industry. Okay. Now, this, the next question is inspired from this photograph which featured on page number 5 of the Hindu newspaper. Now, this photograph is the depiction of the festivities uh, which is started uh, to celebrate the new year that is Ugadi which is celebrated in the state of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka and Goa. So, Jatras, that is fair, are organized. These are the kind of marking of the starting of this uh, New Year celebration. And uh, if you can relate it to, no for North Indian students, the 
द मंथ ऑफ चैत्र एज पर द हिंदू लूनी सोलर कैलेंडर मंथ ऑफ चैत्र इज द न्यू ईयर सेम इज द डेट एंड द टर्म दे यूज इज उगाडी now festivals dance form art form are important from the perspective of upsc examination as you can see here there was a the question in 2018 based on these festival and dance forms and you had to find the correct <coughs> correct matching we have taken a similar question based on various uh, new year festivals in india so you can find this compilation in pdf let us quickly take up the festivals that are mentioned in your question itself first is puthandu an option has been given the maharashtra now this is incorrect as you can see here that this is new year festivity of the state of tamil nadu second is shigmo an option here mentions manipur which is again incorrect because Shigmo is Konkani uh, celebrated by Konkani speaking communities in Goa and parts of Karnataka. Third is correctly matched that is Ugadi, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Telangana. Lastly, Sajibu Cheroba. It is celebrated in the state of Manipur and not West Bengal. So, question asked. how many are incorrectly matched answer would be c that is 3 3 of them are incorrectly matched now the last question of today's discussion is based on this news article which featured on page number 7 of the indian express newspaper now a report submitted to national green tribunal that is ngt highlights that the compensation amount or the penalties that uh, that environment protection charge and compensation which was there with cpcb that is central uh, central pollution control <coughs> board remains idle and unutilized so thus defeating the purpose of the taking the compensation or charge so upsc has been asking question based on uh, ngt and cpcb as you can see in 2018 itself it has asked a comparative analysis between the two we have taken up a question based on the powers and functions related to cpcb now first statement says it is a statutory organization under the air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 now this is a an incorrect statement because it was it is a statutory organization but constituted under the water prevention and control act of 1974 though it was interested with the power and function of air act of 1981 it was established under the water act of 1974 second it says the national green tribunal empowered cpcb to collect environmental compensation now you know that uh, the compensation is sitting idle this statement is correct here you can see that uh, ngt through its various judgment has empowered the central pollution control board to lay down the methodology to assess and recover compensation for damage to the environment and so on the third statement says it does have the authority to carry out all the duties of a state pollution control board now this is uh, a correct statement if you will see the powers section 18 gives the power to cpcb that cpcb can give order to state pollution control board and if one of its directive is not followed the cpcb does have the authority to carry out all the duties of a state pollution control board so as you had to find the correct option your answer would be b that is only two so that's all for today's session drop your uh, doubts in the comment box and do like and subscribe the raus channel stay tuned for more such updates thank you very much